Oh, the anxiety, the anticipation of a live show. Whether it's a huge production like ACDC, maybe Madonna, U2, or just a small club. Intimacy, you know, it's got to be how it's delivered. The commitment to it, no matter what. Like this show. I hope we're committed. Maybe we should be committed. Not sure. And what about us, the ticket buyer? Oh, we're hooked the minute we get, we click that button now and buy that ticket all with you. We can't wait, you know, weeks, months, or during COVID, maybe it's two years before you see the band. Uh, it's supposed to be a magical night, a magical experience. Hell, maybe it's in the afternoon. Even if we've seen them or not, we're ready. And hopefully they are too. Tonight, panelists' favorite show, their favorite five live performances. On the panel tonight, telling us about their favorite five performances, the man who's seen the Grateful Dead more times than he has been alive, the Grateful <laughs> Dude. Oh, well, the man who not only saves his ticket stubs because they'll be worth something someday? No, because that's what you do. You save your tickets if you're I, a music obsessive. I use them as uh, as uh, wallpaper. <laughs> I, I'm thinking he can make a puzzle out of them, maybe, or something, right? She's been waiting backstage for Robert Plant since 1970s. Damn, <laughs> Deb Armitage Hicks Maloney. <laughs> and uh, she sacrificed the Foo Fighters for Buckethead against her knowledge. <laughs> Who's he Against my will. That's a good one. Now, we didn't tell her, hey, you know, the Foo Fighters are in town in Rochester. We're going to Buckethead. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. How are you, everyone, tonight? I know this is a, we got on here late. Sorry. Oh, it's yeah, fine. It's yeah, great. Beautiful well, it's weather. Still early right where now. you are. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 430 and it's uh, 81 degrees and sunny. Wow. That's <laughs> a great lot. What makes a great live performance? Do you need the spectacle? You know, speaking of big spectacles, subscribe and make us the biggest spectacle that we can imagine. Of course, if you already subscribed, don't unsubscribe. We lost a subscriber last week due mm -hmm. to that. Come on, Dad. You know you're already <laughs> subscribed. <laughs> this is the ultimate crowd participation show. Let's jump into the mosh pit of memory. And uh, let's start off with our eldest statesman, the Grateful Dude. Okay, well, my number five, I don't think it was even close to my favorite live concert. But memories are done for, come from other reasons. I happened to get married uh, a few years ago. We won't tell you how many for exact, but um, I went and saw Rod Stewart with uh, all my best buds and uh, my family. And everybody showed up. And um, 14 of us went and saw Rod Stewart. And we thought he put it on a pretty good performance. You know, we knew all the songs. But yep. uh, but uh, was it my best concert ever? No. Was it one that will always be with me? Absolutely. That's yeah. my number five. Nice. nice. I, and we, you know, when he starts downtown train, uh, I, that's, I'm always going to remember that and yep. him kicking soccer balls into the crowd. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Upper yeah. deck, too, a couple of times. He's got legs. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's easy top. Never mind. <laughs> Could be either one. <laughs> Deb. Um, this was my first and only stadium concert. Um, if I wasn't into stadium concerts, it wasn't anything that ever really drew me. I, I like more intimate type things. Um, but to see some of the big bands, sometimes that's what you have to do. And in 2018, two girlfriends and I went to see you two at the stadium. And, um, it was amazing. It was a beautiful September night, um, perfect weather, the crowd was well-behaved because we're all old. Uh, 
<laughs> back open. Your section was the whole yeah. yeah. Was that True. the Elevation Tour? Yeah, yeah. I was at that show. It was amazing. Wasn't it great? Back what, was what so stadium, good. Hmm? What stadium? What? It was at Highmark. Okay. The Bell Stadium, yeah. Um, back open. Well, I love back. And that was just a plus. I mean, I didn't, I didn't go see the concert because of Beck, well, but I. A different show. My brother went to that one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so it it was just it was just really well done. Uh, the production of it was amazing, like any stadium show you would expect. But you would close your eyes, you would never know how old those guys are in you two, and they just still rocket and it was exciting and it was fun and they played so many of their hits but they played a lot of more obscure ones that if you weren't a youtube fan you wouldn't maybe know but i can't imagine out of those eighty thousand people there were too many that didn't know they're obscure because there's not many obscure so mm -hmm. great great show nice nice jeff I picked from May 31st, 1994, the band Live at the Icon in Buffalo. Oh, nice. Only yeah. for the simple fact that I like to be able to say I saw a big band like that at a shithole concert place. Like, <laughs> in, one the worst, in one of the worst parts of Buffalo. Like front row, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At that, at that place, yeah. hold. It could hold 500 people. I'd be surprised. Yeah, those floors are oh, sticky. Yeah. And that was for the Throwing Copper album, I believe. Yeah, and it was it wasn't even out yet, was it? Uh, I don't know. So it might have been just barely came out, barely. But yeah, yeah, it was it was it was awesome. I don't remember a lot of it, but like I said, just for the fact that I know that I was there was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try to fill in on that later. Oh, <laughs> Sue. Um, and those, and I used to get cranberry vodkas there. I remember they were horrible, and I get like instant indigestion. But but you kept drinking them. But I didn't know what else to order back then anyway. I'm like a cranberry, please. Um, <laughs> so my number five, I went with a band that I'd wanted to see forever. Um, and I kind of gave up hope towards the end there because it just wasn't happening but finally got to see them at Jackson Trey. Uh the Last of the Kings. Um oh, and okay. even though it, it took forever to see them, they were still great. Showmen, the music was right on. They had the whole crowd I mean I didn't I guess I didn't realize I knew they were super popular and they always sold out, but to see like the entire crowd getting into it because um, I think I'm the only one here in Buffalo who ever even listened to them. So it was, be true. it was my be people. True. It's true. <laughs> so so that was that was a lot of fun. Cool. And that was of course Mark was there too. <laughs> Someone had to drive. <laughs> uh, all right. So my my number five, the tea party at it I know. Was, I believe it. I believe it was not September's. At the, was it? It was one with all the mirrors um, on the one wall. Yeah, not September's, but what? What was it, Jeff? Was it blind airport? Melons, Sinbad's? Blind melons. Uh, it was Sinbad's originally. Sinbad's originally. Sinbad's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you when you go to see a band Hall, that, um. I don't know. You hear on the radio that sounds like some like like um, the Doors on Acid, which uh, probably was what the Doors were on, but um, it, with Led Zeppelin thrown in and this this you know reincarnated Jim Morrison and in, in what is uh, um, I almost you, you, you don't know what to expect, right? So when you come in and I don't even know remember what the opening act was, but when the lights went out and there were just candles on stage. Jeff Martin walks on and you know it's a, this is your first foray into a, into this band and he steps up to the microphone and goes boy by the looks of things we're going to do some black sabbath tonight 
<laughs> like maybe he was expecting that the lights should have been on. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they they brought the house down that night, uh, you know, and just it was an ear shattering performance because this was something you hadn't heard uh, in 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 anywhere, shape or form. And uh, what they do in the studio, they do even better live. And and when he starts bringing out instruments that you don't even understand from some foreign country and he plays them like he's been sleeping with it for 16 years. Uh, it, it's fantastic. Was this the and, one that would have been maybe August 19th, 1995? Yeah, I, I, yes, I know it was an August night. Fire in the Head, The Bizarre Sister Awake, Walk With Me, The River, Sun's Going yeah. Down. I And of course, yeah. you know, you can't see them in Canada without being at a big show. So that was, you know, that was the benefits of being in Buffalo, New York and getting all the Canadians to come over. So uh, absolutely yeah. my number five. Back awesome. to the Grateful Dude for number four. My number four, I happened to see these guys a few times, I think five times, but um, in uh, um, during the Who's 25th Anniversary Tour oh, wow. in Los Angeles, and it was actually taped for a radio show, I mean, for a television show, and also was made into one album, uh, I saw the Who Do Tommy. Oh wow! And, wow. and um, nice. Well, it, it got more nice because nobody knew this until they got there. Stevie Winwood, Patty Labelle, Phil Collins, mm -hmm. and Elton John decided to show up. Oh, yeah. My God! Yeah. And Amazing. I was second row to the left side. Mm -hmm. And nice. uh, but after I think the fourth or fifth song, there were no rows. Everybody, it, makes sense. <laughs> it was great. I remember it. It's uh, uh, it was the uh, I've only seen Elton twice, and I think this was great. Patty LaBelle, I had never seen before that. I seen her once after Winwell, I'd seen once before, but uh, they just watching the Who is always an amazing thing. And um, I know some people drag on the who but i've always liked them and always probably always will they're probably one of my top listen bands but watching them live just like the, almost all of my picks here live is better than records there's just you know sometimes and it was a good it was it was a very good uh theater so the music the sound sound was excellent no reverb it was really really good so that's my number four pick, Mark. Okay. Thanks. Seven. My number four pick was um, my first real rock concert. Um, I had seen Billy Joel before. I had seen the Eagles. I don't consider any of that rock compared to this guy, um, Mr. Detroit himself. Ted Nugent, 1980 <laughs> at the Odd. And um, oh. what a wild experience that was. Um, I don't remember who opened for him. I didn't care. It was him swinging across the stage and the way he could run around with that guitar and belt out those songs. And it's just very exciting. And um, and then I got to see him again in 2011, which is one of my honorable mentions, but uh, it was at Art Park and I got to meet him. I went into his trailer right. and yep. met him and got to sit on his lap. Yeah. And he whispered in my ear, something's going to come get you. And uh, <laughs> so Ted has a special place in my heart. <laughs> so he's my number four. It's good. It's good. Jeffrey Young. Uh, mine was from July 5th, 1992. Mm. Probably the biggest concert. I've, one of the biggest concerts I've been to, just stadium wise. Metallica, Guns N' Roses, and Faith mm. No More Rich Stadium. Oh, oh my God. And uh, I mean, like all three are at their height of their, they're basically their careers at that time too. Like just you know, Use Your Illusion one and two was already out. And Metallica, like, and uh, yeah, it was just it was just huge show. Like the just how the, many people at the stadium? Uh, I mean, the stadium at that time I think held like eighty thousand. I don't think it was completely sold out, but still, there was easily sixty there. Yeah. 
It's a lot yeah, they people. didn't use the whole stadium, right? They they mm-hmm. blocked some of it off for the. Oh, yeah. you could go everywhere in the stadium. It's just that they weren't like like you could go to the top deck and hang out if you wanted to, but it wasn't like yeah. every ticket was sold out. But it was still, I and mean, they you could. I went to the top deck. I remember watching that you had literally three separate giant mosh pits because you know the <laughs> big plays, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was uh, yeah. I just I remember it was just great show. In case you want to know about Jeff uh, Young and his concert experiences during the show, he'll be next to you, <laughs> and then he'll be gone because he has this tendency he likes to move himself through the crowd and just he goes up front, then he comes back. He goes over. He's yeah, he's, he's checking it out from all angles, mm-hmm. trying to get the the best feel of it all. It's the way to do it. So the music moves me. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Well, do they still do mosh pits, by the way? They're still big. I'm sure they yep. do. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I uh, run fast during my, uh run far away from mosh pits. <laughs> well, if, well, if it's a mashed potato pit, I'm in. there you go. Mm. Um, my number four is the Foo Fighters. Uh, you know, and what can I say? I, I waited. <laughs> I was patient. I sat through Buckethead. Buckethead was fine, <laughs> by the way. But you know, if I had had my choice, we would have gone to Rochester for the foods. Um, you did not but- have your choice. It was a great show, and I can't remember. It was long. They played a lot, a lot. Three hours and fifteen minutes. Yeah. Wow. Um, so That's and, and I, I can still like, I mean, we had good seats, uh, but I, I still remember seeing like Taylor. You could literally see Taylor's white, curly white teeth smile all the way in the dark from where we were sitting. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's cool. So. It was a good show. Awesome. It was a good show. Yeah, it was uh, a eleven song encore. Jeez, <laughs> oh, I, I was t- I was tired. I enjoyed every oh, second it's of exhausting. it. Exhausting. Like wow. Where was the <laughs> show? <laughs> that was at uh, at the Key Bank. Okay. Was it? Yeah. That's the one where we got yeah. tickets to seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that was a big. That was a long show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he he. Uh, one more encore. Two more encores, three more. And he's just like, the crowd keeps going. And then, then Taylor's behind him going, oh, 10? And he's like, what the? Yeah. They're like going, let's beat Springsteen here, boys. Yeah. Let's- it's, well, <laughs> I, 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 was, I know it's Springsteen, them, and Pearl Jam are the long, uh-huh. they, they run long shows. I, I was at the Pearl Jam one. That was like 30 plus songs. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I wish I would I wish I would have seen Pearl Jam. Yeah. Back it was their last me, show of their tour. Too. It was in Buffalo, and they just were like, our managers said they'd pay for any fines, so we're gonna play as long as we want. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. Oh, me. Uh yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh did somebody already mention? Uh yeah, it was Jeff. I want to say I saw a big band in a very small place. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you right now, the biggest band in the world uh we saw in a very small place. I don't know who you're just saying. Hughes at the town ballroom. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh to to see Bellamy and his crew. And this is probably you, there's Rush for three man band. Then there's Muse. And they might be trying to carry that torch. I don't know, but um they're maybe getting a little queeny lately. But uh that show was absolutely blow you through the back wall of the place. And you knew that they didn't belong in a small place like this by any means. Mm-hmm. But they played like they were. And uh, I remember that that was the MTV College Sideshow. Really? So, and, and along that note, as my honorable mention a- attached to this is, we've also seen Radiohead as an opening act twice, never as the headliner. Really? So that, that's, uh, they opened for R.E.M., and then they open for Alanis Morissette. And uh, I wish I would have, you know, I'd seen them in a small club, but still just to see yeah. them, having seen them twice. And uh, yeah. and that one was actually on OK Computers. Back yeah, to you, uh... Grateful Dude. OK, well, my next one is probably musically my favorite. Um, it was a 13 and a half hour concert. Mm-hmm. 
It was the closing of Winterland. It okay. was nobody really expected what happened. So the you so it was supposed to be well. I'll, I'll get into what happened. So you get there at seven thirty. There's supposed to be the first show, uh, first act at eight. Nobody knew who, except for the dead, for sure. Nobody who was it. So it starts off with uh, Dan Aykroyd and uh, uh, Belushi. Oh, Blues uh, Brothers. Oh, yeah. Blues Brothers. That's cool. They did an hour set. Wow. Got off stage. Then the new writers of the Purple Sage came on, and about they did about an hour, hour and twenty minutes set. It was really cranking. Then the Blues Brothers came back again and did three or four songs. And this was about probably coming on around 11 or 30 or so. The Dead came in and did a seven and a half hour set. Mm. They never left the stage. One one or, or more were on the stage at all times. At so that is the longest show hour, ever? No, there are longer shows. Oh, but is that like Russia but, where they were forced against their will? No, the take amphetamines. They went multiple, <laughs> day, multiple days, and they just the music never stopped. As my ne as my next ones, but this was really, really. This was uh, back when the Dead were a seven piece band, when uh, um, uh, the God Shocks were there, and it just they blew the ceiling off. There was about, I think, about twenty five thousand of us in Winterland. And this mm. is the last time the place was torn out, down and made into uh, apartment buildings. But uh, when it, it's about 6, 10 in the morning, Belushi came out and says, breakfast is served. Come get it. I'll never forget <laughs> that. So they said, fed everybody breakfast. The concert was over at about 7.30 a.m. or so. So It, it was just, uh, it was just uh, what, bur burgers and Pepsi? No coke. <laughs> no coke. <laughs> I it was scrambled eggs and other crap, I believe. No, oh, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it was donated by some some mission or something. I don't know. So, and a lot of coke. Dad, and, so that was a that was pretty radical. It was the only time I ever saw the Blue Brothers. Only time. Wow. Well, that's hey, that, that's fantastic. That's, yeah. that's a prize in itself. I dressed yeah, them once. Yeah. yeah, I watched Halloween five. costume. I was oh. a blues brother for Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mark, uh, back to you, buddy. Deb. Um, my number three. I really don't have to say too much about it if you have ever heard of this artist, but this was another concert um at the Odd, um, in 1985. It was Prince's Purple Rain oh. tour. It was incredible. Nice. Um, Sheila E. opened for him and actually then also accompanied him in, in a few songs. It was just, it, Prince is the best. I mean, I I don't even remember how long it was. I just, I think I just sat there frozen most of the time. Just, I couldn't believe I was there. And in 1985, I was poor. So I probably didn't eat dinner for about a month so that I could pay for the ticket. So, um, and I wasn't buying any popcorn there, but, um, it was just, it was incredible. So that was my number three. Yeah. Do, do, I, I never eat at shows. Does, does, does everybody yeah. else eat at shows? I don't No, but I hadn't eaten for a month. <laughs> well, you know, remember Jackson <laughs> Triggs. Oh, Jackson Triggs. That's true. Yeah. Well, well, that's a more sophisticated show. Yeah. Oh yes. With our little plates <laughs> of cheese. <laughs> Jeff. Uh, my number three, I'm going to piggyback on you. Same Muse show. Um, yeah, that that place only holds like not even more than 1,500 people. That was uh, 2000, where did I say 2005, April 21st. And I saw that it was posted that the ticket cost 15 bucks. Oh, my God. <laughs> but yeah, and that was, bucks that was a, a loud show, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> loud and really good sound and you know there's actually on youtube an audio recording of that entire show oh no cool. yeah that's oh. cool found it today oh. <laughs> i'll have to watch it you can't watch it you can only listen to it <laughs> well okay i'll close my eyes and pretend yeah. that i'm there cool 
It's actually pretty good. I mean, considering. But yeah. So that's a short uh, Razor Lights Open. That's the band Razor Lights. Oh, very good. Yes. Oh, yeah. Razor Lights. Never heard of them again after that. <laughs> uh, two albums. I have them both. Yeah, two albums. That was it. Shocking. <laughs> it's like when you the say first album, album, it's like, of course you do. When Jeff says, yeah, I was so. like, of course you did. Yeah, the first album is excellent, though. Really good. Really good stuff. They were good opening. Very, very, very British. Uh, mm-hmm. Sue, this is number three. Number three, I went with um, Melissa Etheridge and Rochester. Was it the Eastman or no? No, it was that was at the, the, they called it the Memorial Auditorium. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Tell the story. So, oh, you're better at telling it than I am. No, this well, is your... Well, well, Melissa, she's, I love Melissa Etheridge. I think she, she still rocks, but... Um, I, I, it was an incredible concert just to see her play live and sit there with her guitar and sing her song, her story songs. Um, and it was kind of, I think it was before she was really blowing up too. So, um, I'm glad we got to see her when we did. But so we stopped at a Chinese restaurant. It was right across the, th- the street though, right? Golden Pagoda. The Golden Pagoda. Um, and Mark and I were kind of seated in sort of back, not a back room, but a side room towards the back. And while we were eating, we heard like a table in another room when she couldn't see them, but, um, there was some talking and singing going on and we're pretty sure it was her and who knows who else was in there. But, but anyway, so potentially it was her, but we didn't want to go and interrupt because that, you know, that it's just not what I do. So it was like, oh, that could have been, that was really cool. We just had dinner with Melissa Etheridge and then we get to the <laughs> show and we find out we're in like the very last seats in the, in the whole odd. <laughs> we can barely see her. So a little bit ironic. We probably should have gone over. You were that the close, but that far steep. away. <laughs> very steep. It was More steep. Like, oh, yeah. 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 It's good show. Yes. That's fun. Excellent. Mm-hmm. It was definitely her because um, we, when we look to the left on the way out the door, all the famous people that have eaten there are on the wall. Mm-hmm. Bono, all kinds of people. Uh, Robert Plant is on the wall. Cool. Hanging on the wall. On wall too. <laughs> Hanging on the wall. Hanging on the wall. So my number three is a tie. One is for the pure shock of it. Oh. And my tie... Um, the other one is for the pure meaning and of it all. So uh, both of them associated with the woman to my maybe left or right, depending on how you're looking at this. Um, <laughs> so many years, uh, one of my birthdays, she said, don't look at any concerts on your birthday. Uh, <laughs> just go with it. Mm-hmm. We're going somewhere and I don't want you to know. So I, yeah. I obliged. Um, so uh, we had to cross the border into Mexico, and uh, this was before no. like internet, though, too, right? Yeah, um, like where I found this well, was it was on paper. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yes. it was not online. Classified because we're old. <laughs> so, so we're going into Canada, and uh, it looks like we're going to Toronto because we're driving to Toronto, and uh, so we're stopping at the Hummingbird Theater somewhere around there. Get out of the car. I'm seeing people dressed really well, really nice in their dark black garb uh, and very eclectic. And then someone yells out, who needs Bjork tickets? Who needs Bjork tickets? And I'm like, oh, my God, we're going to see Bjork. She only does like nine shows a year. She hits uh, uh, notes that aren't scalable. And uh, so it was with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra and the Icelandic Choir. Wow. So And... Matmos open. Uh, if you're not familiar with Matmos, he he's an electronica performer, but he doesn't play instruments. He puts things on balloons and and gouges them and and makes music out of the whole thing. It's mm-hmm. it's eclectic craziness and a tonsillectomy in the background. So it's a real you know you know what you're in for. Um, and then of course with her would be our first concert, and that would be Richard Marks at uh, oh cool at Darien Lake. Darian if Lee. I remember who the opening act was, that would have been a great way to end it, but I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, there's my number three cheat. <laughs> Grateful dude. Okay, so my next it seems to be on these first five were all big concerts. There was nothing that was small. I think the small, the smallest one was the the next one. We won't, but I'll keep that a secret for a little while. So this was on 1982. This was in California near San Bernardino. It was the US Festival. You're looking at it between the 75 and 80,000 people for a three day event. Started on Friday and ended up s Sunday. Oh my God. Uh, you were allowed to go in and out with a with a okay. pass, but most of us got, I had a tent. I was probably about 50 or 60 feet from the main stage. There were three stages, the main stage, left and right. Mm -hmm. There was probably four football fields between left and right to tell you how big this place was. Whoa. And, uh, <laughs> this place, it well, there was more than Woodstock there. And it was better, it was a little bit better. Nobody got dysentery and stuff like that. And there are plenty of porto potties. It's not and, in your tent. <laughs> you know, well, but let me give you the I have it saved here. Let me give you the rundown of who was there and you'll understand why. So, in the three days, the first day, opening up at about, oh, 12 o'clock, the police, the Talking Heads, the B-52s, wow. Oingo Boingo, All right. the English B, and my favorite of the first day, flew to the stage off the, the, the Ramones. Ah, oh, the Ramones. You saw wow. the Ramones? Oh, they were so good. With the oh, police. I'm wow. so jealous. My God, hey, the only hey, thing that would have better is that the Sex Pistols were in the middle. Yeah, well, it would have been good. Tom Petty started off the second day, it was a Saturday. Then Pat Benatar. Then the Kinks. Then the Cars. Then Santana. And then Eddie Money. And, and uh, Live Edmonds. Who I never Ooh. heard of, but live L I V E Edmonds. Okay, You're that stoked. was a closer. And then On the second day. That was second. Now coming up the third day. Sunday. Hey. <laughs> yep, we started Sunday with a mass up on stage. <laughs> there you go. Then about ten a.m., uh, Fleetwood Mac showed up and did a set, and then before the end of their set. Jackson Brown comes out, does two songs with them, and then stays on stage and does a whole set of his own. <laughs> then Jimmy Buffett. Oh. Then um, uh, uh, Jerry Jeff Walker. And then for the final two hours to end the whole concert, the dead came out and did two uh, three sets. Was there how many us shows are you us? Two, eighty-two and eighty-three. Okay, I went to both. Eighty-two was much better. Eighty-three was um, a little bit out of my. This was all my wheelhouse, and eighty-three was all out of my wheelhouse. Gotcha. So, yeah, eighty-three must have been the year Triumph was there because they got some good videos yeah, that I've seen. Exactly. Actually, yeah, but uh, uh, festival was my first. Um only huge concert i mean huge i yeah. i have been in stadiums and stuff with 30 40 50 000, but there mm -hmm. this was this, just a sea of people you That's know crazy yep yeah. and they had they had uh 24 hour um uh cafeterias and stuff like that the food was fairly cheap it was only 25 dollars to get in this thing <laughs> So for three days, so Man, it was twenty five hours for three days. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, but and you just heard, and all these bands did did um, at least full sets because uh, they stopped playing about two o'clock in the morning or so, and then they had sleepy time till about seven thirty or eight, and then somebody would be on stage or somebody would come up and start playing the piano and. 
uh, w to wake people up and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. it was a pretty, pretty impressive concert. And I can top that with one next. But Mark, Ooh, ah. yes. So he saw Jimi Hendrix uh, in a, on a cloud. Uh, <laughs> Jesus and the Apostles. <laughs> um, no, you, you make me go after him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, and Deb goes, oh, well, I saw the Charlie Brown band at the yeah, <laughs> was, it's yeah, Charlie Daniels at the at the um fire hall down the street. Yeah. Um, oh, they were kicking that's a it. Thing. What's it? Molly Hatchet. Um, yes. But, so uh, I'm switching gears here, Chef okay. Jeff. Um, my number two was at a venue, local venue here, Shays. And um, I was supposed to see this person as part of a band in 1980. And that didn't work out for um, reasons that you'll know when I say who I went to see. Um, but it was Robert Plant, solo, 1994, Shays. I was in the balcony, but the first row to the le right of him, and he was literally, I felt like I could have touched him. That's such a great venue for, you know, old theater. Like, Yeah, and those seats were perfect, perfect, because I, I picked them out. I went actually with my friends Linda and Ale and, um, and Tom, and um, it was just, it was incredible. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even, I'm not good at remembering which album that they're touring other than the Purple Rain one for, um, Prince, but, um, mm -hmm. it was just, he's an, he's an amazing singer, showman. I'm in love with him. I proposed to him that night. <laughs> I'm still waiting to hear. It was, um, what was, what year? 94. Manic Nirvana. Probably. I That'd don't know. Probably. I had just been, I had been in the hospital for three days prior and I dragged myself there. I was very, very ill. So I still went. And so, yeah, it was, was a great decision. Yeah. was well, a good decision. Uh, Jeff. 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 Um, don't know. <laughs> funny, because I picked October 19th, 1995 at Memorial Auditorium, Page and Plant. <laughs> and uh, that was an excellent show. Excellent they had, show. They did a couple of tunes with the Buffalo Philharmonic, which was before anybody was really doing that. I thought it was That's really, cool. it was very memorable. Um, and they played all Led Zeppelin songs, really. So it was awesome. I mean, because I was really, I, I was, I was never gonna at that point know I was never gonna see Led Zeppelin anyway. But uh -huh. hey, I'll put plant, and yeah. I didn't know they're gonna play all Led Zeppelin songs, but they did. So even better for me. Um, so yeah, that was <laughs> a great show. Do you, Do you remember the opening act? No. I don't think anybody else does. I should probably do them as an unknown Sunday. It would be the Boo Radleys. Who's that? That's the <laughs> opening act. They have multiple albums. I think they might even still be around today. I have a couple of records. But yeah, interesting opening act for, for them. I mean, cool. typical. But. Sue! <clears throat> oh, I went with the Tragically Hip Ontario Place in the Round. Because, you know, I don't really know what to say about it. It was just a magical night of the hip. It was <laughs> the first time, obviously, I think we'd seen them. Uh, what year was that, Mark? Was that night? Um, one? It was 91? Really? Okay. 90. I think the reason we were over there is because, well, besides, I mean, what it was it was you yeah. could drink right yeah oh yeah well i had my i had my first no i i was gonna have, see i can't remember i was gonna have a strawberry daiquiri i remember and the machine was broken yep so then you um, had a vodka and cranberry <laughs> probably <laughs> <laughs> um but was it it was, it was 91 all right yeah because we saw them again in 92 at the great canadian party okay which that guy down at the bottom well he could be the left right i don't know was there yeah. That was a great show. We and we were, yeah, we were like a arm's length away ah, as well. It's the best feeling. Well, apparently, more on that later. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> got to stop oh, going I'm, to concerts together. <laughs> my number two is going back to Jeff Young's pick, 
Uh, but I wanted to, but I'm not gonna because I remembered one while we were sitting here, and I, I can't believe I wouldn't have had it on the list. And that would be the night the Watchman died. Uh, the Watchman from Canada had been around in the music scene of Canada for many, many years. They, they, and they had their uh, latest album out, which was, nah, it's escaping my mind mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, Jeff Young and I had seen them uh, like maybe a few months before that or a, a year before. And all of a sudden, they say, we're breaking up. The final show is in Buffalo, which I couldn't believe. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, but uh, Greaves, uh, Daniel Greaves and his band decided that was going to be their final show. The The entertainment of that show started earlier, though, because he sang the national anthem at the Sabres game that we were at. So oh, we went to really? the Sabres game and then right to the Continental, which is a club that has a ceiling height of my basement, Yeah, um, technically. And it is my belief that the Trues opened. Um, that sounds right. But... I believe the Watchmen were late because they got stopped at the border prior to <laughs> with everything. The, the equipment came late or something of that nature. But um, he sang until his voice gave out. And that I, mean, I can't remember the ridiculous amount of songs that they played, but it, it was it was crazy. And uh, a memorable experience because it was the final show. They are now touring and just small in Canada coming back again but I, I don't know any live show but they anyway more on the Watchmen uh next week I think back to the Grateful Dude for his number one okay number one um which some of you who know me really well might be quite surprised but I think this technically was the best concert the music was perfect the recording was perfect the album that came from this sold millions and millions and millions of copies. I am talking about 1972, Hot August Night by Neil Diamond. Oh, it was a live concert at the Greek. Wow. I, uh, mm -hmm. I was 12 Get rows Get me to the back, Greek. 12 rows back and I was in the bar section, which means that Ooh. little... Sexy little ladies brought you drinks through the whole uh, <laughs> uh, nice, but it was hot, it was about uh 90 95 open, open uh, arena. So, open there was about I think there's about 6,000 that are in the actual arena itself, and then there's a grass area behind it where people set up uh picnic baskets and the whole thing. and hang out on the yard and because of the amphitheater style the sound just goes out there perfectly but he sang his heart out i believe i've been told that this was only supposed to be about a three three disc set and it ended up because he just went on and on and on and did songs that i weren't wasn't even sure his backup band he had a band he a full band with them, uh, with a string section, and and a horn section. So nice. it, yeah. it was it was really really good. I will, will never forget this concert as long as I live. It was okay. It was so I have to ask. This is this is seventy two. It's super hot. Did did he change jumpsuits? That that you know, <laughs> Neil Diamond came out in shorts and. Wow. That's a freaking lootly. Wow. I didn't know he had skin. No, no spangled jumpsuit <laughs> thing. Oh man, I'm disappointed. Yeah. You know that you know it's, uh, I've seen he him isn't forever with my mom. I, <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> forever in so, blue jeans, baby. Yeah, that, that night it was I'm not wearing blue jeans, damn it. Um <laughs> uh, uh, I had a song list and now I don't have it anymore, but um wow. but anyway so yeah it was it was fabulous i i will nice. never forget it, I, it was, that's a it, fabulous pick i love that that's that would yeah. not that one i would i would have been like wow there's no way but yeah wow <laughs> so, true I, I mean i mean i've seen and i have so, so many honorable mentions i won't even get to yeah but, um mark yeah. asked me and mark were talking about how many uh concerts we've been to in our life 
And I think I'm somewhere between 1,500 and 1,700. Yeah, there's no way you can remember all of them. I oh, am I don't remember close to that. I don't remember a third of them. So I, I remember I was there, tickets. but don't ask me. <laughs> and and? Then, uh, the problem is, is that uh, in my younger days, I used to go to concerts and drop a tab, and then who cares what you remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why that one show was seven hours long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whoa. I, I well, hey, hey. Really groovy. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. groovy. <laughs> Drop it down. No, no, God. it's out of sight. Out of sight. Out of sight. Out of sight. Yeah. Out of sight. <laughs> out of sight. <sighs> I mean, Deb, you're number okay. one. My number one. It starts with a little story. So, Ooh. um, Carrie, I, I. I'm thinking it was 90, it was either 95, March of 95 or March of 96. Mark will be able to probably correct me when I get done with the story. Um, I had gone through a lot of health problems um, and I was starting to get on the mend and we hadn't really gone on vacation. We had little kids and um, my husband uh, told me we were going on a surprise trip. And he wouldn't tell me where. Um, and, you know, March in Buffalo, you'd go somewhere else and wear totally different wardrobes. So the whole time I'm just stressing, like, why aren't you telling me at least what temperature I'm going to be in? And just wouldn't. He said, just pack a bunch of different things. We're only going for two nights. So I said, all right. And I don't like surprises. I'm type A control freak, right? So um, get on. We drive. we're starting to drive and we're going to the airport. And I'm, I'm airport. We're going on a trip on plane. So we get to the airport and, um, you know, we're at the gate and it says that we're going to Savannah and I've always wanted to go to Savannah. So I was just so excited. So, um, we land in Savannah and I'm all ready to go. And he says, well, no, we got a connection. And I went, what? We're not staying in Savannah? Uh, and then oh, we, get the, we get to the gate and it's Memphis. And I have no desire to go see anything like Graceland. I'm not a country person. I'm not a Elvis person. And I was crushed. I just sat there just going, I can't believe I've been sick for like three years and we're finally going to do something and you're taking me to Memphis. <laughs> what is wrong with you? So I was kind of quiet. Um, we get there and we get to our hotel and I'm still thinking, why did you bring me to Memphis? It's a really nasty city. It's ugly as hell. And I'm thinking, what are we doing here? So He's like, come on, we're going to, we have, we're going to go to dinner and then we've got something to do tonight. Well, what do I wear? He goes, just to put on some jeans, whatever. So we go and have dinner. We went and had these incredible ribs in this alley where there were rats running around and you went down in this back stairwell, but that restaurant had the best ribs ever. And then we take a taxi and we pull up and there's the pyramid venue in memphis and there's a huge marquee page and plant no quarter i almost had a stroke and didn't see them i <laughs> was crying and jumping up and down and screaming to everybody going i'm going to see page and plant well so were they because they were walking into <laughs> the arena Did you was... get line, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> so it was either the march before the odd or the you saw them in 95 jeff yeah it was uh october 19th 95 yeah, yeah. that the show in memphis was first okay um i i will it was i thought i had died and gone to heaven the one of the best memories of it though was you know we had floor seats but which i wasn't happy about because i'm five foot one now tom's six foot four right so right. I stood on a chair the whole time, but next to me was a 12 year old boy that was just as excited as me standing on his chair. We became best buddies. I wonder where he is now. He's like 45 years old. He'll be a subscriber next week. Awesome. So 
That's awesome. my number one. It, it'll Absolutely. never be topped in my lifetime unless he comes and sings in my living room. You can't do those trips anymore because everyone just looks on their phone. Oh, I must be going here. I must be going here. Ex exactly. <laughs> no, it's true. Can't keep secrets. Jeff, number so one. So my number one is from 1986, August 29th in mm -hmm. Niagara Falls at the Niagara Falls Convention Center, Van Halen with Bachman Turner Overdrive opening. Huh? It's the 5150 tour, the first year of Sammy Hagar. Sammy Hagar. And uh, wow. it's where the, the huge video Live Without a Net came out. Um, that's where nowadays everyone watches the Eddie Van Halen solo because it's like 20 minutes long. Um, that's the where it came from. But, you know, in that, that time, there was also, you know, the drum solo, the bass solo. Uh, you know, with yeah. the Jack Daniels bass guitar, <laughs> yeah. um, but it was great. I mean, they they played a couple of Sammy Hagar songs too. They like, there's only one to rock. I can't drive 55. Um, mm -hmm. but just and they actually ended the show with a uh, rock and roll from Led Zeppelin as the, one of their encores. Oh, cool. there um, you go, cool. Just you know, that was like the one of the that's the first concert I really ever went to too. That's why it was so big for me. Oh, neat. My favorite band of the time, first concert of the time, going with my best friends from yeah. you know my, my street you know and, and just... your street your street <laughs> your, from in the hood yeah. your homies oh, oh yeah. his by the way his street old english that's the name of the street <laughs> old english road <laughs> yeah. that's so tough sounding like abbey road yeah. tobacco road old english road <laughs> old english road <laughs> but uh yeah just an amazing show and uh it was awesome. Fun. And, you know, the thing is, too, like, a lot of people don't realize, like, you'll have videos of people who watch, like, the solo now from Live Without a Net. This, that was more, like, in Connecticut. Um, and But it's the same show. And people don't realize, like, that within that 20-minute guitar solo, he's playing parts of other songs that you would only hear <laughs> those parts, like parts of Mean Street and Spanish Fly and Little Guitars and all these mm -hmm. other songs. But he just kind of put them all together. Yeah, it's cool. Awesome. Sue, you're number one. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so you are. <laughs> I don't know. Like you're all saying, there's been so many awesome concerts, but this one, I think, um, I don't know, just because of who she is, uh, I couldn't think of anybody else to top it. Um, so I went with Barbara, uh, Stripe Band in Toronto. I think this was another birthday present. And this actually was like you were surprising me, Mark, with this one. So I love um, it. So I, I, mean, I didn't hold it long enough, right? You what? I, I don't believe, I believe you knew before we got there. <clears throat> Maybe on the way, yeah, because even my boss at the time knew, because um, I think I had to get out of work on time for once. Mm -hmm. So, because I remember, I don't remember exactly what happened, but yeah, because we were to drive out to Toronto that night to see her, and um, and uh, I can't remember when you let me know, but it was incredible, and and just seeing her on stage, it was it was surreal really mm -hmm. she's like such a presence and um I got into her weirdly enough in college I don't know why I just I was drawn into her whole story and went through her whole catalog and um just found it fascinating the story her story everything she's touched and um and I think um when she did like people and I mean mm. You know, yeah. it, it was it was just a fun show, and it was an expensive show. And watching all the people on the floor, knowing how much they paid to be there, was kind of yeah. fun too. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like uh, watching the big rollers at a casino. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one one hour and fifteen minutes to get into the venue because they wanted everybody. Oh yeah, they did. That was like one of the first ones we ever got wanted. Wow, really? And it's because maybe all the kind only of diplomats, one. Dipl dignitaries. Mm -hmm. People from other yeah. countries that were presidents. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that was really cool. Spectacle. All yeah. right. So, yes, my, my wife uh, already mentioned the Tragically <laughs> Hip at Ontario Place in 1991. 
that is my number one. Mm -hmm. um, may have already mentioned this. Uh, I'll make it quick. Uh, mm -hmm. We went. We did not have tickets. That was not a good idea because they were the biggest thing in Canada at that point. And this was the final show they were ever going to play in a small place. Um, on on rock radio, Rick Derringer had said <laughs> many, many times, you got to see this band before they blow up and they'll, you'll have to see them in a stadium. So we went to Ontario Place. I uh, We didn't have tickets. I went to the, the guy says, well, they're sold out. But that guy over there, he's scalping them. So I went over and I was determined that I we were going to sit. And you guys, I got front row. So I got front row in the round. So it it, 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 it mm -hmm. spins. So um, the funny part is Rick Derringer himself was there. Uh, he was standing next to us in the opening. And he looked over at me. He goes, you're not Canadian. And how the hell does he know I'm not Canadian? <laughs> what, I don't have an ascot on or something. What, what is all that about? But uh, we got to talk, and he said, "He goes, you're gonna love the opening band. The opening band was was fantastic. The Sky Diggers. Our photograph is on the inside of their album cover from that from that shot. So That's on the cool. front row. Um, but to see Gord Downey in true original format, which is eyes don't open, songs get sung, mm -hmm. soliloquies in between. Uh, the roadie had to come out and dive on stage because the mic came unplugged, and he had no idea. Um." <laughs> The crowd, the crowd, the crowd. They knew what they were in for. They they didn't stop from the minute it started. It reminded me of Columbia in a soccer game, soccer mm -hmm. match. That the crowd was just that was it. It was on and it was going to be on through the whole night. Nobody sat down. Um, and then of course New Orleans is sinking, and he yeah. goes right by us on the railing, and uh, swimming uh, by. So, just how big is Ontario that. Place? I never saw a concert there. It's it's basically think of um Melody Fair open air. Yep. Okay. Basically. Yep. Cool. Okay, I have um, two honorable mentions I want to talk to. <laughs> you guys okay. go real quick. Um both were what I call stumbled on. I had no idea. This was seventy four. Uh in the San Fernando Valley, there was a little place called the Squeeze. Maybe 150 seats, maybe. And I would go there Friday nights. And all it said was band playing tonight. I had no idea what band was. So I went there. It was 20 bucks to get in. No, I you was, thought the band was The playing. band. <laughs> and it was the band. Oh, my gosh. It was only That's four really of funny. them. That's really funny. Only four of them. Only 70 people showed up. Really? Yeah. I mean, wow. and this is the band, Robbie Robertson and the wow. whole oh. God, that's crazy. That is like awesome. The trail. Yeah. And then the other one I knew about, but it just it said it was in a little place in San Jose, probably two fifty is a college kind of uh, uh theater, and Jerry and Guest. We knew who Jerry was. Well, it was a maybe a two sets, an hour and a half of acoustic Jerry Garcia and um, uh, Eric Clapton. Oh, wow. Wow. That's them wow. too, playing acoustics. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah I, saw, I saw Eric Clapton do his acoustics at um, Odd. It had to be like 94 or something. That was a great show. He had some old <laughs> blues guitarist yeah. for him. So. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Good show. Any other honorable mentions from anybody else? Well, Bare Naked Ladies was a good one for me at, at HSBC. So it was Chris's first concert. And the first time he saw a bare naked lady. I think I said that on another show. Yeah. So oh, yeah. 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 Good, yeah. He, he Just... never looked at a jumbotron the same way. <laughs> <laughs> or he was always looking in the jumbotron. <laughs> yeah. What's up there next? Is that what, that's where they show the ladies. Uh, Guster so, opened that show from Boston. Yeah. It was good. It was fun. Rob, Anybody Rob else? Zombie. Rob Zombie, of course. Uh, the surprise show. Show place. Yes. Cool. Yeah. That was cool. The it's show fun. place. I I gotta say though, like the one if if anyone's gonna ask you what show that you saw live surprised you. I mean, I didn't even I didn't even really want to go, but 
um, the Rollins band. Uh, I had no idea. I you know, just want to hear, see, you know, that screaming guy. Okay, sure. They're a blues yeah. band and they were really good. Um, really? That one I, I didn't expect. Uh, that was excellent. And mm -hmm. I've only, I've only walked out of all the shows I've been only walked out once. And that was Nine Inch Nails. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> not surprising. Not not surprising. I'll just say one band that I they saw that I thought was always amazing live is uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Mm -hmm. Never got to see them. Me neither. Yeah, we were we were second row for them at uh, Darien Lake. He's uh he's a monstrosity on stage, and uh, he he coerced the monstrosity. <laughs> oh yeah, he he comes on. He it's all about him. I mean, he takes center yeah, stage he and everything. He he's something else, but he got up on the micro megaphone. I'm at one percent on my uh on my iPad. So bye everybody. Right. Bye. 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 Michael, dude. It was uh, <laughs> it was uh, you know he said, you you on the lawn, come on up. Who's gonna stop you? And then there they came. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so much for second row. <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> We're share, sharing the aisle ways and everything. But yeah. So. I Great had show, one. though. I mean, I, I didn't think well, the Red Hot Chili were anywhere near the, the Stone Double Pilots. But. Saw a great double bill with Motley Crue and Aerosmith. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet that was. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh. Anyway. Well, good show. Sure, eventually we'll do this again in some other shape or form. I'll come up with something. Uh, you know, small, smallest shows you've ever been to, or whatever. You know, tell us about your favorite show. Uh, give us your five. Uh, we love the the comments. Give us a like, and of course, I'm looking for my dad to subscribe again. <laughs> I, I thank the panelists for coming on with us tonight and sharing their five, and uh, stealing two of mine. We're <laughs> on the web at beyondyourradio.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course the lovely YouTube. Uh, we're, you know, it's all about music, bands, albums, and artists. Tomorrow on the channel, it'll be album review Saturdays. I'll not tell you what those albums are because they need to be a surprise this time because it's all across the board, some crazy stuff. Although, Amigo the Devil. Ooh. Uh, uh, Sunday, Unknown Sunday, featuring Love in Reverse. Think what you will. Thank you for watching and happy listening. Bye.